UFC Atlantic City. We have seven bets already on the card. This is going to be a quick video just going over my betting thoughts, short and sweet, under 10 minutes. Um, if you want my full card breakdown, check it out two days ago. Just like every Tuesday, I dropped the full card breakdown. Thursday, just like tonight, quick picks, quick bets. Just try to make it short and sweet. So let me know in the comments your most confident bet on the card so far. I really want to appreciate all of you guys for helping me hit 2,000 subscribers. We've been doing this for a couple years. Every single UFC card, we're going to keep it going. I have a lot of fun with, fun with this. So I appreciate you guys. And stick around to the end of the video. We're going to be smoking that bookie pack, putting together another streak. We did snap a six-card profit streak last week. So you already know Mr. Bounce Back. I don't care if it's Apex or a big pay-per-view. We're getting after it. So let's get into it. I got seven bets already, but there's still a couple more I'm looking at. So we're going to quick go over. Angel Pacheco taking on Kyle and Lochran. Um This is a fight where I do think Lochran should be the favorite. I think he's the better, more well-rounded guy. I think the overs cash in this, but you guys know my style. I'm not trying to lay over 3-1 to one on a guy with under 10 fights. Um, I was looking at potentially handicap 3.5 for Pacheco, but... ah. Probably just going to lay off this one. I think Lochran wins. Lochran by decision. We move on to the next fight of on the card. On, Andre Petrovsky taking on Jacob Malkoon. Um, Petrovsky, I was looking at potentially finish only. I think Malkoon most likely wins this fight by decision. I think he should be the favorite. But the line's a little wide. Petrovsky, uh, inside the distance only. Decision equals uh, push. That's like plus 140, plus 145. I think that is live. Uh, I was looking at it. The only thing I'm scared of, Malkoon, if, if Petrovsky gets super tired, Malkoon could potentially get a late finish. I'm going to pick Malkoon by decision. I'm going to keep eyeing those props. Petrovsky, first round sub. Petrovsky, uh, inside the distance only. Maybe uh, the Malkoon decision. Malkoon's props are all just too wide. But we move on to a fight I do have some money on. Melissa Gato taking on Victoria Dudikova. And I know just saying that uh, sounds a little scary, having money on this fight. But I think if you got in on that early underdog money on Gato, that's the side. Um, I didn't get that. You guys know on fights like this, I'm looking for a dog or pass. Um, but what I did do, I think this fight goes to the decision. I don't see a finish. I mean, I could see Gato getting a finish if he gets on top too easily. But I think they're probably going to strike a decent bit. I think it's going to be pretty competitive. And I'm going to say that this fight goes to decision. Honestly, like the line. It's only minus 186 for the fight go to, to go to decision. I guess everybody sees the finish happening. It's possible. But I'm going to say this fight goes to decision. I parlayed it up with a fight we're going to be talking about here in a minute. So give me the over. Fight goes to decision. I'm going to pick Melissa Gato, but no bet as far as a side. Ebo Aslan taking on Anton Turkali. Uh, best nickname in the in the game. The pleasure man. Uh, I think Ebo probably gets the early finish, but maybe he comes out a little bit more poised because Aslan did take his only loss of his career to Anton uh, when he gassed out after beating the absolute crap out of Anton uh, and then just completely gassing off the table. Anton could, we could see a repeat or we could see Aslan come in a little bit more, you know, poised, try to be able to, um, you know, contain himself for the full three. But I'm going to say Ebo gets the early finish. No bet for me. I think it's a high variance fight, especially with it being a rematch. And we move right on. Um, Connor Matthews taking on Dennis Bazookia. This is a uh, coin toss fight for me, man. I think Bazookia is probably the more skilled guy. Um, I do love, you know, the, both these guys. New England cartel, Lam Longo Weidman, they're both young. They're making improvements. They're still green. I think Bazookia probably the more technical guy, but Connor Matthews is a live dog. This dude has a gas tank. He's got the wrestling probably here. Might not, maybe not the overall grappling, but the wrestling. I think he is a dog that'll fight for your money, so I don't blame people taking underdog shots on him. But I am going to pick Bazookia, but ever so slightly. I think it's a very close matchup. Um, just want to go ahead and lay off that and watch as a fan. We move on to the biggest favorite on the card, Julio Arce taking on Herbert Burns. Julio Arce is going to be a little undersized here, but I do think he has Herbert covered pretty much everywhere. Herbert, terrible gas tank, pretty much just a jujitsu guy. Doesn't have a great wrestling or great striking. Um, I don't blame you taking like first round shots on Herbert, but you know, Arce is getting a little up there for the division, and he is, uh, you know, a career bantamweight. So Herbert is going to have some size, but ah uh, man, not somebody I want to lay, you know, almost four to one. And Herbert, I just I will never put my money on him. Uh, he's a one round fighter. But this next fight, I do have some money on. We got Verna Jandaroba taking on Lupita Godinez, and man, that sounds very opposite. It's coming up, me saying that twice about the women's fights. But, you know, this is a fight where I really do feel like I've had both these fighters 
um, you know, I've been able to make good reads on them in their career so far. And I feel like this is a fight where Lupita should win this fight with her volume. She does have the boxing. She does have the wrestling advantage here. Verna, straight jiu-jitsu. You know, she's typically sub or bust, but she has been winning some decisions lately. So I did take the fight, goes the decision, parlayed it up with that Dudikova fight. That's at plus 122. And then I also did... Uh, this is very crazy to have so much money. Like, for me, you know, I'm not a huge betting women, women's MMA guy, but I do feel like this is a fight where Lupita should win this fight with, with her volume, um, be able to get on top and stay safe as long as she doesn't get subbed. So I did... Uh, also, I do have Lupita by decision. That is minus 110. And I did hedge a little bit with Verna by sub. Um, so, um, it's a lot of action for me on a women's MMA fight, but I do feel like Lupita wins this fight by decision, you know, eight, seven, eight times out of 10. And, uh, and I think, you know, maybe one out of 10 Verna catch the sub, but most likely this is going to go by decision. Um, so give me Lupita, and we move on to another one of my favorite fights in the car. We got Nate Landwehr taking on Jamal Emmers. Um, I think Jamal should be the favorite. He's the more technical guy everywhere, but Nate is the definition of a live dog. He will always fight for your money. This dude's going to throw volume. He's going to come forward. He's going to try to hit a couple takedowns. And Jamal Emmers' fight IQ is a little bit sketchy, but I do think he's the better fighter here. He should win, but I'm going to not bet this fight. I'm just going to watch as a fan. I think it is going to be a really fun fight, but... Uh, yeah, just going to lay off that one for me. I will pick Jamal Emmers to win. Probably a decision. Next up, we have a fight that I really was kind of duped. This fight said well, uh, middleweight everywhere until like a couple days ago. Um, man, at the end of the day, I, uh, Reese McKee is live here because I did parlay Chidi, you know, like two weeks ago uh, with the overs and the Rose fight. And I, you know, that the overs obviously cashed, but Chidi, you know, I... I he is a big welterweight. He's this the weight cut does scare me, so I don't blame people taking dog shots on Reese. Um, gonna be watching that. You know, potentially thought about hedging out, but um, you know, right now I'm just gonna. I do think Chitty gets the finish early mo more times than not, but you know, if he doesn't, we could see him gas and Reese get the comeback. So don't hate dog shots on Reese McKee. I do feel like I got a little bit duped there, but hey, that's on me. Um, is what it is. We move right on to the Bilal Jail Kyle Nelson fight. This is one I'm, I'm thinking about a potential 3.5 handicap play on, on Kyle Nelson. I do think he is live here, but I do think that the volume, the gas tank of Al Jail could give him problems. We've seen Kyle Nelson kind of chill out a little bit and be able to extend himself later, lately, um, kind of switch up his style a little bit. But I do think Al Jail's, um, you know, he, he, his volume, his pressure, or his pace, not his pressure, but his pace and his volume. You know, could Kyle Nelson doesn't throw a ton always, especially when he's trying to slow himself down. So, you know, I could see how JL most likely win in this fight by decision. But the 3.5 uh, for Kyle Nelson is like minus 110. I do think that's that's a little live here because I could see Kyle winning a round off LJL. He's not somebody I want to typically lay over 2-1 to one on as far as LJL. Just, uh, you know, can kind of be a little bit of a wet noodle out there. So give me Kyle, uh, or give me Bill LJL by decision, but... Won't be betting that unless I take maybe that handicap. Next up, we got my dog of the week, man. Uh, Nurzelton Ruzaboyev taking on Cedric Dumas. Ruzaboyev, you know, he is dangerous. He is definitely dangerous. Almost all his fights finish inside the distance. Um, and he's been pretty durable too. But um, Dumas, been pretty durable as well. Been subbed, but, you know, uh, has shown his chin. I just think Ruzaboyev's getting a little overrated here. I do like Henzo Gracie. You know, he's training with great guys. Um, you know, they, they have nothing but good things to say about him. Um, so that is promising. But I just think, you know, this big line, I got to do Moss plus 230. I just think this could end up being a close kickboxing match. And, you know, Ruzaboya, let's be real, man. He's mostly been beating up cans. Dumas, you know, he is a little bit of a dumbass out there sometimes. But, you know, uh, not somebody I typically want to lay money on. But at least he's it's a big underdog odds. I think this could play out a lot closer than the odds indicate. So give me the big underdog and Cedric Dumas plus 230 um, to play the spoiler. I was looking at the FICO's decision plus 400. I don't know if that cashes, but a um, little bit wide in my opinion. But I get it. Uh, just Dumas ain't a can like most of these guys were as a boy I was fighting. But next up, we got Bruno Silva versus Chris Weidman. You guys know I'm biased here. I love Weidman. That's my boy. We used to game together all the time. Um... But I get it, you know, he's getting up there, he's had this, I mean, 50 freaking surgeries, the injuries, Bruno Silva hits like a truck. Gun to my head, man, I, I can't lie to you, I'll have to pick Bruno Silva, but he has shown a path here for Chris, he's been taken down, he's been submitted countless times, Chris could do that. 
It's just a matter of can he stay safe? Can he get the takedown? Um, I, I don't blame people taking dog shots on Chris Weidman. Um, you know, I do think he's live, but we'll see if he can stay safe and get the fight to the ground where he needs to be for sure. Oh, I do want to mention on that Kyle Nelson and that uh, that um, Bill Aljail fight, I did take fight starts round two. I honestly think they made a mistake. It's minus 300 because the over 1.5 was like 450. I parlayed that up with uh, something we're going to be talking about here in the main event. So I uh, did forget to mention that. But first off, co-main event, we got Vincente Luque, Joaquin Buckley. Um, I think Vincente just has more past the victory here, man. Like, Buckley could knock him out, and I get the concerns on the Luque side, but Luque could knock Buckley out. We've seen Buckley knocked out several times by guys not as good as Luque. Uh, don't hit as hard as Luque either. Um, I think Luque could knock him out. He could take him down like we saw in the last fight. He could latch up one of those nasty darses like we've seen on guys much better than Buckley. I think Luque has more paths and at even money, minus 110, man. I, I like the Luque side. I know everyone's on Buckley here, but I like Luque, man. I think, um, I'm, give me the better fighter who's fought the better competition. Everybody thinks he's shot because he was finished once. I get the, the brain injury is scary. But he's only, let's look on paper, narrative aside, he's been knocked out once. Buckley knocked out four times. So give me Luque. I think he's got the sub and the wrestling uh, upside. And, you know, I just think more past the victory. Next up, we got Aaron Blanchfield taking on Minofaro. Um, Man, spoiler alert, this is, you know, I got the dog here, man. I think the line is wide. I got plus 165 on Faro. Uh, could Blanchfield take her down? Could she get her back and submit her? It's definitely possible. But I'm going to say Faro keeps her uh, standing a good bit. When she gets taken down, she'll make her work. Um, she's not lost off her back like a lot of these girls Blanchfield has fought. She's not Molly McCann, man. She's not Sarah Alpar. So, and Blanchfield's fought better girls than that, but still, like, we've seen her not be able to take down J.J. Aldrich. Um, and, uh, who was she, uh, she couldn't take down, uh, she couldn't take down Blanchfield, or, I mean, uh, Aldrich. Aldrich actually took her down. Uh, we, she couldn't take down Santos. She shot, like, 15 takedowns. Now, Santos is a beast, but, um, still, I just think there is a world, uh, you know, a likely world where Faro keeps this fight standing, and when she gets taken down, she makes her work. She gets back up. She avoids the subs. Faro's not, a, uh, you know, a fish out of water on the mat. So, I'm gonna say Faro wins a volume-based decision here. I took the over as well. I took, uh, Faro straight at plus 165, and I took the over, parlayed up with that fight starts round two for Aljeo. I took the over 2.5 in this one. It was two, minus 230. The fight starts round three was minus 300, so that gives me minus 110 on that parlay. And I'm going to real quick run through all my bets. Again, Faro plus 165. Luque, minus 110. Dumas, plus 230. Um, I'm looking at potentially some, some of the, uh, like the over in the Ruzaboya fight as well, but haven't bet it yet. Um, Lupita by decision minus 110 um, and the fight goes to the decision in Godinez Jandaroba with the Gato due to COVID decision that's plus 122 I did hedge that and the Godinez by decision with a Jandaroba by sub plus 575 um, again the the over 2.5 in the main event parlayed up with Aljeo versus Kyle Nelson starts round two and uh, those are going to be my bets so far man seven bets uh, a couple more that I'm potentially looking at. Uh, so I'll let you guys know on Twitter. Uh, and let me know in the comments your favorite, most confident bets, your most confident picks. Um, make sure you click that subscribe button. Again, appreciate y'all helping me hit over 2,000. Um, man, uh, this fight's gone, a, or this video's gone a little longer than I wanted. Try to keep it under 10, but a decent amount of bets for a little, for a little, uh, you know, free fight night but those are my those are my bets those are my picks man appreciate you guys um i will catch you guys if not saturday live for the fights then uh tuesday breaking down the next one again appreciate you guys enjoy the fights make some money peace